Sorry about that. I'm working on that over here. This is the frame rail that's going to go in there. Uh, yeah, I start with a Mustang piece, but it's not quite right. The Mustang is a little shorter, so you can see here I've had to splice in a little section. It's about an inch and a half long here because the, the Mustang ends back about here, and I need it to come back a little bit more. And another problem with the Mustang piece is that the original ones didn't have a back on them, and that exposed them to a lot of moisture and sand and uh, salt, and all that junk just winds up accumulating inside the frame rails, and it rots out. I think Ford thought about this because their solution to this was to bang a couple of holes in the bottom, uh, provide a place for where the water could run out. The problem is all the dirt and salt and sand seem to stay behind. So I'm sealing up this frame rail entirely. I've, I've filled the holes here and then, and then ground the welds down so you can't really tell it's been, it's been filled. I'll, I'll make that a little bit better. Uh, and then in terms of the splice that I've added on here, I've also ground down the welds. And I'll, I'll fill these area in with some high build primer and after I've painted this you'll never be able to tell that it's been extended. The uh, bushings here for the leaf springs are the wrong size. Uh, the Mustangs are a little different from the Cougar and so I've just acquired some appropriate sized steel tubing and uh, I'll go in there and I'll weld that all the way around the perimeter to make sure that's the correct size. And uh, I'll do a little reinforcing too. This piece that was in here was just had a couple of tack welds, and so I've just run a beam weld all the way around it just to make that a little stronger, and then just smooth it off with a little bit of grinding to make sure that this surface is flat. So that's the frame rail. It's going to go back in over here. And it rests flush against that piece like that and then I'll have to splice in a little piece there to make it uh, uh, merge with the original one appropriately. I'm missing about three inches there. Um, and then what else I'm working on is there was a big piece of the trunk floor that came out and that's this. So this piece here used to be right back here. You can sort of see the top edge right here is the cut line here where I removed it. And it was just way too rusty for me to want to keep. Um, and this is the, the this lip here is where the, where the front of the gas tank rests on. And yeah, just not worth saving. Unfortunately, nobody makes these pieces, and the Mustang isn't even remotely similar. So I fabricated one from scratch. Uh, this started off as a 4x8 sheet of steel, and I made myself some tooling so I could put this curve. There's a curve in it here. So I put the curve in it over here and the ends are flat. So I had to cut out a little pie shaped piece here and weld in a little bit in there and grind the welds down so you can't tell what happened. And I bought a sheet metal brake to put these 90 degree bends in. And this piece as well, I just cut out the appropriate size, made that piece, and welded it in, completely seam welded it. And uh, you know, after I put some high build primers on it, you'll never be able to tell. And then these ribs, I bought a bead roller, with a piece of equipment called a bead roller, and uh, you can make these sorts of patterns. You do this all just by hand. It's basically a hand crank machine. And as long as you're slow and careful and you practice, you can put these sorts of shapes into it. And then the tops, you know, this will be where it will merge with the original car up here. And I've got to, I had to do some cutting to make sure that the bends were all proper because it's actually a complex shape up here. Uh, but when I get 
it all tacked in place. I'll, I'll come along and I'll fill in these with the appropriate pie-shaped pieces as they're as uh, they're required. And then that piece goes back in right across here. And you know, like I said, then the gas tank will go in right about there. And then another piece that I've been working on is this piece back here. There was quite a lot of little holes in there and uh, I've put a lot of filler pieces, a lot of time patching that piece up. I don't know if you can see on that side, there's about a dozen little holes there that I've cut out and I've welded in one inch diameter steel discs and then seam welded it and then ground it down flat to make sure that you can't tell that it's ever been repaired. And uh, there I've welded some in on that side. The blue is just from the heat of welding. Once I put a little bit of sanding to that, it'll that, that blue discoloration will go away instantly. Uh, but I've done a lot of repairs on that side as well. A lot more than just those little blue dots. It's just, I guess the camera isn't good enough to pick those out. But the rest of the car, the rest of the frame rail is actually is in excellent shape. And pretty much from this point forward, the car is rust-free. It's, it's just in excellent, excellent shape there. You can see the floor. I've removed all the seats, back seat, front seats, and I've just wrapped up the dashboard and steering wheel with some plastic to keep it from getting dirty. A uh, little silver box hanging down there is the fuel injection computer that I'm using for the engine management system. Um, yeah, and maybe we can just take a quick look at what the motor looks like. I don't know if you ever saw this. So it's called a Boss 351, came out of a Boss Mustang. Uh, it's based on a 351 Cleveland. Uh, I've converted it to fuel injection. That's what all this stuff is here. I don't know if you can see underneath here. Here's a fuel injector, fuel injector wiring harness. Another, and there's basically one fuel injector for each cylinder. Uh, and these uh, fuel rails are custom. I made the uh, intake manifold, it is a carburetor style intake manifold, but then I welded in these injector bosses down here. I don't know if you can see them, that's right where my end of my finger is. And then the injector just plugs into that. Uh, and then all this hoses here, these are what are called AN lines. They're developed uh, during the Cold War for the, by the US military. Uh, and I, I believe stands for Air Force Navy. Um, they're universal. You can take the hose, you can take these fittings off the 